Hey everyone, thank you for checking out the video. Make sure you go to Facebook and you check out our group, Don't Tell My Wife. We're planning something really cool for May the 4th, so you don't want to miss it. Now, taking a look at the newly released SH Figuarts, the Qui-Gon Jinn. This released today here in Japan, and we're going to take a look at it from the side, the back, and the other side. It's a pretty good figure. I'll take a look at it, see what it's all about before we do that. As you can see, the insert is pretty cool. It's got an image of the movie poster. So this is, this is actually pretty nice. Uh, this is the first time I remember them doing this. Now here are the instructions. This is the front, so you can get a, an idea of how the figure operates. And here is the back. Pretty straightforward, I would say. Um, not hard putting it, all, uh, putting it all together. So here's the figure. Out of the box, you can see it comes with two heads. I should say one head and a faceplate. Here is the hand for the communicator, the extra lightsaber. Comes with a variety of different hands. Over here and on the other side, some more hands, and that is the one that holds the, the hologram of the Naboo starship. You can see he has the blade for the lightsaber and the motion blade i guess is what you would say and on the back you can see he has the cloak and the tunic there as well so out of the package let's take a look at the hands it comes with a couple of hands for holding the lightsaber this hand um, what i do is i have it on the upper part of the lightsaber and then the other hand here this is for holding the hologram you can see that there's a specific way to to do that here it is here's the hologram it's pretty cool for the scale that's that's nice better than what Hasbro does in my opinion so you can see on the bottom how it attaches if you don't line it up it ain't gonna go in this is the hand for the communicator for uh, talking to Obi-Wan back at the Skywalker homestead and here is the communicator It's nice, good detail, very nice detail for the scale. It's really cool. Uh, here is the lightsaber gripping hand for the angle. I use this on the bottom. Um, there's two of those. There's a couple of these hands for open force pushing. And then we have the Watto I don't need Republic credits <laughs> hand. So, uh, all in all, there's a good amount of hands, and um, they're pretty good. Here is the lightsaber squish. This is nice. It's not bad. I, I like that they're doing this now. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I like that it's, um, it's an option. And here is the regular blade um, with the hilt. Easy to take out, easy to put back in. And here is the extra lightsaber if you just want it attached to his belt. Good detail. So here's the figure. Here is the other the other head, but it's more of a faceplate. This is either he's talking on the communicator or he just got impaled by Darth Maul. So you know you can decide <laughs> when the figure when the original figure. Um, was announced and released. This this head sculpt was a bit controversial. I don't like this head sculpt as much as I like the one that comes with the figure. You'll see that now. I think the one that comes with the figure is a much better sculpt. As you can see. Uh, that seam sucks. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about it. That gap sucks. It's not very good at all. So, but the sculpt, again, I like the sculpt. I like the paint apps. I think it's pretty good. So let's get this back in focus. Um, the head on the neck is a little bit kind of goofy at times as you can see right here 
you know, I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of goofy. So looking down, he gets the range to about there, but with the hair sticking up, it's kind of, again, it's weird. It's not really something you want to do. Uh, and looking up, you get that range, which again is is not the greatest, but, you know. So now, looking at the arms, uh, there's a swivel at the top, right there, at the bicep. And then uh, you get 360 degrees with the arm as well. It goes up, I would say, maybe 120 degrees, um, which is good range. That right arm is, I think, slightly better than the left arm. Has a little bit of a drop down as well to it. Now, if you took those hands out, you could have them have that kind of samurai look, that Yojimbo look with his hands seemingly inside his um, inside his clothing, which I think is kind of cool. I didn't end up doing it, but I may look into it with my figure at some point. Now, moving it here um you do get some pretty good range on the on the elbow as you can see that's pretty good you can have that communicator right up to his right up to his mouth which again is good and you i i forgot to move the head you can move the head like that side to side that kind of puzzled dog look now, this is a bit of a mistake <laughs> so i had to reassemble that um i will say that trying to get any kind of ab crunch you're just going to have that same problem it's just going to keep happening as you can see so what you see is what you get out of the box i wouldn't push it it just kind of keeps coming apart so you know don't get upset and don't get frustrated. Now the leg comes up forward about 90 degrees and back you don't get much range at all. There is a drop down on the legs. Um, doing that Van Dam, you get about there. So it's alright but going back if you want to do a proper split you're not really getting much at all. And that's okay. So you get a little bit of motion there on the leg, but there's no um, there's no articulation on the boot. It doesn't swivel. There's the toe, um, standard moves. The foot moves down. The foot moves up. Kind of standard. Nothing great. Nothing bad. Uh, for the knees, the knees, the range going in the back, it's not the greatest, but it is good enough for you to be able to get him posed in that meditation pose when they're on Naboo at the end of the film, waiting for uh, waiting for his confrontation with Maul. But you just have to line up the feet to make sure that he doesn't topple over. We'll take a look at the I am Iron Man who does it better. I think Iron Man does it better. But it's all right. It it works. Um it's a it's a it's a sufficient motion and range for me um for what the figure is. Again, he's not Spider-Man. I don't need him being acrobatic. I don't need him having incredible range, so that's enough. And that right there is where you would attach the the lightsaber. So let's get that cloak on, that Jedi robe, and see what he looks like. So as you can see, it's a bit baggy, it's a bit big. Um, it's wired on the bottom and on the sides going up, and the hood is also wired on the top but 
you can kind of see <laughs> putting the hood on it's just yeah he looks more like Gandalf so I wouldn't advise that I'm not really gonna have him displayed with this at all it's okay it's it's a decent robe um, it's better in my opinion than most of the soft goods that Hasbro gives for the figures and it's nice that it's wired pretty much everywhere that you might want it with the exception of down the seam in the back but it's good enough I would have liked it maybe a little bit more brown but you know that's that's what it is and it's all right now this one this tunic one I do like this one um, I put it on backwards here I'll have it on the regular way later in the video but I do like it I like the way it looks I like the way that it it moves and it displays so um, it's pretty cool I'll most likely be displaying my figure with this on rather than off now here he is for some scale there's the Hasbro Black Series R5-D4 and the Cyborg Superman the Moffex you can see the range and height there then over here on your left is the Mafex 200 Mando 2.0 and the Black Series Glavis Ringworld was on the right. We have the Empire Strikes Back, Mafex Boba Fett, and the Figuarts Yoda on the right. And now we take a look at the first release, which is on the left, and the new release, which is on the right. Take a look at the heads you can see right away you can see that there's a difference with the paint uh, my figure was not in sunlight at all it was displayed in a case and um, for the last two years or so it's been in in storage so there's no real color deterioration but you can see the paint apps are very different And you can see on the left, the seam is not so bad with the head. I like the paint apps on the new one here. I think it's better. But obviously that seam, I'm not a fan. So the color on the hair is, I think, is much better now as well. Now looking at the tunic, uh, you can kind of see there that the, under sh the underclothing is darker on the new one, and the Jedi robes are also a bit darker as well. Now the original release figure, the legs are a bit more wobbly. He doesn't stand as, as easily as the new one. And again, I basically just had him standing in one position the entire time I had him with his legs pretty much together. So it's not it's not a big difference um, I didn't really do anything to make the legs loose um, you can see the the hair there on the old one versus the new one I don't know if that's maybe just how he was in the storage that I had but I don't know anyone out there have the figure I think that maybe that gap was always there I don't know the new one the gap is much better Uh, they are the same height. I just, I didn't drop the legs down on the old one. They are the same height. Don't worry. Um, they scale exactly the same. So there you have it. There's the two of them together. The old one on the left, the new one on the right. And now taking a look at the new Maul and Qui-Gon engaged in battle. Uh, I do like the figure. I would probably give the figure an 8. Eight and a half out of ten. If you uh, if you're thinking about picking it up, do so. It's great. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time.